Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Ejecta, and welcome to Blood Moon Tycoon. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of the space station. You unlock the space station at 10 Reapers. However, you'll need 100 Reapers to unlock everything that it has inside. You'll gain access to the best armor in the game and some of the best weapons in the game, too. If you haven't seen my other video yet on how to rebirth efficiently, you've missed out on some pretty good gameplay tips that I provided. One of those tips is saving up enough sapphires to be able to buy the hyper thruster. It costs 10,000 so it'll take a little time, but it is so worth it. As you'll see, I use it frequently, it gets me around the map fast, and it saves a little bit of money too because you don't have to buy the stairs when you're building your base. So as you see, we go up to the top of the base, and here at 10 Rebirths we can unlock the space station. When you step on the button, you'll see that you get a portal right up on top of your roof. Step through your portal, and you're in your space station. Space stations are located up above your base. If you're down at your base, you can look up and see it. When you walk into this room, you'll see some buttons that you can unlock. This is where you'll get your armor. The armor on the left costs more in rebirths, but it'll give you a boost to your health, while the armor on the right is purely cosmetic, but it's some of the coolest looking armor in the game. At 10 rebirths, you'll be able to unlock the green tech armor. This armor is pretty cool. This is the armor that you'll be able to get as soon as you're able to unlock the space station. At 20 rebirths, you'll be able to unlock the fire core blocks armor. Now this one will give you a boost to your health of plus 100. And just so you know, you can equip the armor that gives you a health bonus and then equip the cosmetic armor and you won't lose that boost to your health. Next, at 30 rebirths, you unlock the green dragon armor. Now when I first saw this armor, I thought it was really cool. If I was another player and I saw somebody chasing me down wearing this armor, I'd probably be a little intimidated at first. <laughs> at 40 rebirths, you'll unlock the nuclear core blocks armor. Now this armor will give you a plus 150 boost to your health. Now this won't stack on top of the plus 100. This will just replace that, so you'll bump up another 50%. If 50 rebirths, you'll unlock the red Orinthian armor. This one has that Iron Man Robocop kind of feel to it, which I thought was pretty cool. Once you get to 60 rebirths, you'll unlock the dark core blocks armor. And this one will give you a boost of plus 200 to your health. If you're the type of player that likes to roleplay and you want to have that sinister character, this is the one for you. At 70 Reapers, you unlock the Red Dragon Armor. Personally, I think this one looks the best with the Hyper Thruster on the back. It looks really intimidating and with the flying around and all that, it's, just, it, it's a cool outfit. At 80 Reapers, you unlock the Electric Core Blocks Armor. This armor will give you a plus 250 boost to your health. I think it looks pretty cool. It's almost like a cross of Sub-Zero and Raiden from Mortal Kombat. At 90 Rebirths, you'll unlock the Blue Orinthian Armor. This one has more of a robotic samurai feel to it, which is pretty cool too, and it looks great with the Hyper Thruster. At 100 Rebirths, you'll unlock the Golden Core Blocks Armor. This one will give you a plus 300 boost to your health. Once I passed 100 Rebirths, this was always my go-to armor. You can't unlock it until a little bit later in the game once you get to the rooftop of your base, but once you have access to it, get it as soon as possible. Up the ladder, you'll find buttons that give you access to new pets and new weapons. At 25 Rebirths, you'll unlock Glorp. Glorp will steal health from enemies and use it to heal you, which is really beneficial when you're fighting all those zombies. Once you're at 50 Rebirths, you'll be able to unlock Yogdor. Yogdor is Glorp's brother. He is able to steal twice as much health, and he still uses it to heal you. It's a great pet to have. At 75 Rebirths, you'll unlock Zengar. He's the father, he's the strongest out of all of them, he can steal three times as much health, and he still uses it to heal you. You have to be careful with these pets though, because they will hurt other players too. If you're playing with your friends or trying to help out new people, don't get too close because they will kill them as well. Now let's move on to weapons. At 30 Rebirths, you'll unlock the Pulse Pistol. The Pulse Pistol is a fantastic gun, has a very high rate of fire and unlimited ammo. All the guns up here you'll find have unlimited ammo. They still need to be reloaded though. At 60 Rebirths, you'll unlock the Raycaster. The Raycaster has a lower rate of fire, but it does high damage and again unlimited ammo. And last, at 90 Rebirths, you get the Atomizer. This is my favorite gun. It's a sniper rifle with a medium rate of fire, but it does high damage, has unlimited ammo, and it's fully automatic. The final thing to unlock in the space station is the UFO, and you can unlock that at 100 Rebirths. You click the button to spawn it, and if you were to lose it or somebody takes it, you can come back up here and click it again, and it'll just spawn right back on your base. Here's the controls for both PC and Xbox. One thing I've noticed is that on Xbox, when you're firing, you end up having to get out of the spaceship to get out of firing mode, which is kind of a pain, but that's just the way it works. So before I show you how the UFO works, 
We're in the middle of a red blood moon, and I want to show you how we can solo the zombie titan with the weapons from the space station. I've fought this guy many times, and from what I've found is that with the regular weapons that you find in your base, you just don't have enough time to beat him on your own. So how I like to do this is I like to leer him around my base. Sometimes he'll get stuck on the corners and it'll give you a little more time to shoot. Like right here when I turn around, he should get stuck, and then it'll give me a little more, little more time here, and then we can drain some of his health. You have to be careful here because the other Blood Moon zombies will end up sneaking up on you if you aren't paying attention and then they'll start hurting you. We've been fortunate so far, but let's keep on moving. Let's get this guy taken down. You don't really need any kind of speed upgrade or health upgrade to fight this guy. As long as you use this method, you just stay away from him. He's not that fast. The biggest problem with this guy is he'll get up on top of your base and it'll... Oh, there's another zombie attacking us right here. So just the best method here is to just keep jumping back up. If you just try to run away from them, they will get a hold of you. So for whatever reason, when you jump, they tend to slow down and back off a little bit. So just jump backwards, give yourself enough space. This gun doesn't work that well at close range, so you want to open up the gap a little bit. If you're having a problem with that, just switch over to your pulse pistol and take out the regular zombies. Now, I've never seen him get launched off of my base like that before. I thought he was going to go into the ocean there for a second. That would have been, I, well, he would have came back. I've never actually seen him get into the ocean side, though. He's always in the cove. But like I said, just keep following this method. Walk around your base. I don't recommend using other people's bases. I've done it before, but if you get too close to their walls and they're electrified, you will end up dead. So try to leer them back to your base if you're gonna do this. Or if you're not near your own, make sure you're careful and don't get too close to whoever's base you're next to. He is just about, oh, there he goes. He is dead now. So we took him out and we got our rubies. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice that the zombie titan will give you 250 rubies when you beat it. And if I remember correctly, I believe everybody on the server at the time gets that 250 if he's taken out. I don't think it's just to the person who kills him or gets the last shot. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. Now that we have some time, let's check out the Raycaster. The Raycaster is very similar to the Ray Gun that you can purchase for rubies. I'm not, it's a good gun in the beginning. I don't use it all that much. It has a decent rate of fire. It doesn't work at close range. If you have a zombie right in front of you, you're not gonna be able to hit it. So you have to use the jumping method again, back yourself up. From a distance though, it works well. A couple shots and you'll take them out. Um, sometimes if you get a good headshot, it will take them out with one. The pulse pistol, however, this is one of my favorites. You can run right up. It's really quick rate of fire. It just drops them. Even if, if there's a group of zombies, like right here, we have three zombies. <laughs> stacked on top of each other for some reason. With this pulse pistol, we can just go through and mow through these guys like they're not even there. It's an amazing weapon. I definitely recommend getting this one. Typically, the only thing I have in my inventory is the hyper thruster, the pulse pistol, and the atomizer. Those are the only things I've needed to get as far as I am in the game. It's really all anybody will need. But there's obviously, you know, everybody has their preference. You're gonna find things that you like better. There's no right or wrong solution. Oh, this guy wants to attack us. So, all right, we can we can play that game. <laughs> so, I don't know why people do it, but maybe it's the thrill of fighting or whatever, but they usually end up losing. <laughs> well, you've already seen the atomizer when we were fighting the zombie Titan, but on regular zombies, it works amazingly well. It's it says it has a medium rate of fire, but to me, it fires fast enough for what I need. The range is amazing. You can zoom in with your scope, take out zombies at a distance, and to me, it's the ultimate weapon. The Revenant on the yacht is similar. It may be even a little bit more powerful from what I've seen, but you know, once you get rebirths, you don't have to worry about saving up an ungodly amount of money to buy the Revenant which takes a really long time. I have another video coming on the yacht that you'll be able to see how much that actually costs. So now that the Blood Moon is ending, I wanna show you how the pets from the space station work. We have Zengar, which is the most powerful of all of them. I'm not gonna fire at this zombie here and watch what happens. The pet will literally just destroy him. It does hurt our health a little bit. It knocked us down, but you can take out a couple zombies that way without even having to worry about firing your gun. If you get swarmed by a few or if you get attacked one after another, you will end up dying. So I, will, I don't recommend playing that way. But the pets are a great line of defense when you're getting a lot of zombies around you and you're having trouble taking them all down. I don't recommend doing it on any of the special enemies like uh, the chilling over here. They're really strong. They'll, they'll kill you quickly. I don't think the pet can keep up with it. So I'm not going to show you on a player. I don't like to you know walk up and just kill a random player, especially for the sake of doing a video. So... 
but it'll work just the same. Players have a little bit more health sometimes, so I've noticed with new players who didn't have armor, and you go and I tried when I it was when I was learning how to play. I'd go to their base, and then I'd be standing there. All of a sudden, next thing I know, my pet was killing them. They think I'm attacking them, and then they get upset. And I don't like doing that to people. So after we clear out the zombies in front of our base, I'm gonna take you up and show you what the UFO can do. The UFO is really cool. However, I can see it being used as like the ultimate griefing tool. The gun on the UFO is extremely powerful. People can just hover over another person's base and keep shooting them whenever they come out through the top. And it just, I've seen people use it. It takes the fun out of the game. If you use it for zombies, it's really cool when you use it for zombies. You just fly around and shoot things. But I think people in general are just gonna use it to shoot other players. But we'll see, I may be wrong. I haven't, I've run into it a few times, and but I haven't seen it a lot. So I would like to believe that it's not gonna be used that way. It is fun to fly around in, and as you'll see, I'll be showing you shortly. And as you can see, you don't have to use the portal. If you have the hyper thruster, you can fly up here. If you have a helicopter from your yacht, you can also fly up to the space station. So it's just another way to get up here. And that's how sometimes you'll see other people up here on your space station. To get into the UFO, all you have to do is position yourself toward the center, jump up and down a couple times, and you'll drop right in. Now I'm playing on PC, so the controls are a little different. In this case, you end up hitting the shift and control key to go up and down, and then your WASD keys to move around. The controls are a little different here, so to move forward and around, it's it's a little tricky. There's no reticle that shows which way you're pointing, so you have to kind of hit your W key to move forward and you know your A and D key to turn, and it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But the cool thing is when you hit T, you go into firing mode like you're seeing here. Now in firing mode, you can aim around, you can look, you find zombies down on the ground. I'm gonna lower myself a little bit more so you can see. But when you shoot, zombies just explode. And there's, it has a pretty good radius. You still get the rubies for your kills too, which I thought was pretty cool. The gun on the UFO is really strong, but I believe it takes a couple shots to kill the zombies during the red blood moon, and maybe three to four shots to kill the zombies during the blue blood moon. You can take out groups of regular zombies with one shot though. You do want to be careful though because the blast radius is pretty big and if players are near the zombies or near their door, it will kill them. So I don't like taking away people's fun. I've, you know, you accidentally kill somebody and then they get upset, they leave the game, especially new players. You know, they don't want to be grief. They want to just play the game. So I don't use it that way. I've used it before when people were griefing me or, you know, constantly killing me when I was trying to build my base, but I don't do it all that often. If there are other players who are treating people badly, I will use it, I don't know. And eventually they end up leaving. And, you know, I, I consider that anti-griefing, which isn't a bad thing. So that was the tour of the space station and all the cool things you can unlock up there. Awesome pets, awesome weapons, and this really cool UFO to fly around in. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it for you guys. If you could, I really appreciate it if you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any other content. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.